Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop. In this week's episode, we're gonna cover how I made this really cool little grinding milling spindle for my lathe. Particularly important in this episode is how I used this ordinary sewing machine motor and I, I, sh I go into, there are several segments in the middle of this week's video where I show how I rewired it to make it uh, rotate clockwise so I could use it for drills, conventional drills, and end mills. So stay tuned and enjoy and hope you like it. As always, if you enjoy this, ask if you have questions just to ask, I'll do my best to answer. If you like it and don't feel like making a comment, just please give me a thumbs up and do please pass the word because I'm trying to grow the channel. So thanks again everybody. Hope you have a great week. For those of you in the States, happy Labor Day weekend. Take care. Hey guys, thought I would mix things up a little bit. I'm still working on the Workmate new boards, but I received this box today. This is my sewing machine motor that I've been waiting for that will be, hopefully, will become part of my spindle grinder. And as you can see, I'm actually, this is a real live, so to speak, unboxing. So it took a long time to get here, even though it was priority mail, USPS, wrapped in newspaper, so it's eco-friendly. And there's the little sewing machine motor. And it's it looks nice, man. It's really a uh, 1 15th horsepower, 1 amp. It has a nice little pulley on it, which would be ideal, I think, for the kind of round belting that I'm using teeny little plug, looks in good shape, so I don't have to rewire it, so ten, ten dollars, sorry, I was admiring it up close to my face and didn't realize it wasn't showing on the screen, so here it is, ten bucks, let me get a, uh, what I'm going to do, I want to plug it into my router speed control that I use on the other sewing machine motor on the pillar tool, because that gives me variable speed. It works fine. So my plan is to unscrew this mounting bracket here, and this is where that I'll screw in the, the um, piece of channel aluminum in place there and hopefully mount it straight on top of the, of the spindle. So there we have it. Hang on a second, let me get the power supply out. Okay, I need to dig out my router speed control, but I did plug it into a little power bar here and thought I'd turn it on and let y'all see how much torque it's got. See, it tried to jump out of my hand a little bit. Sounds good. No arcing and sparking. Pretty stoked about it. I'll get the router speed control out and see if we can make, make it go variable speed. Okay, I found the router speed control. Thing's so small I forgot where I put it and had to hunt around and get it. But So you've got, with these things, you have the option of going full speed or variable. So if you put it on variable, put it on low, barely turning. I don't know if you can even see that or hear it. Let me crank up the speed a little bit. Nice. That's medium and high. And off. Very cool. Works good. Very excited about that. Hey folks, now that I've redone my workbench, my nice work made, I'd took the scrap and made a little work surface out of it. Now I'm ready to attack the next project, which is, which is finishing up my milling, drilling spindle, milling, drilling, and grinding spindle that I made for the lathe. And as you recall, I bought this little motor, and the thing about it is it spins counterclockwise. So with the dr a little drive belt, it will spin the, the drive pulley counterclockwise. It would also spin the spindle nose counterclockwise, which would probably be okay for grinding, but not good for drilling or use of conventional end mills. 
So one of the things I've, I've read, I've studied up on ideas for reversing the, the direction. You can't just swap the plug around. I already tried that. That doesn't work. But somebody uh, said that if you, if you switch the leads to the graphite bushes, if indeed there are bushes in here, then perhaps that will reverse the rotation. So I'm going to take it apart here and see what kind of pieces I've got to deal with and if it's possible there's no external um, openings for replacing those so I'm thinking they're inside and it's conventional so we'll see I'm gonna take it apart and and we'll see how it goes so starting the actual disassembly first thing I'm gonna do is take the little bracket off that I'm not gonna use but I am planning to use these screws Nicely. Something about having a nice clean work surface, you know. Oh, also, I noticed one thing, you probably won't be able to see that on here, but even though the cord is in generally good shape, it wouldn't be a bad thing to replace it because I do see it worn through right there at the at the junction. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to take that apart. Just take the Pulley off. There we go, that was easy. Hallelujah. Luckily for me, there's a bunch of good videos on YouTube. I guess there's a lot of sewing enthusiasts. So there's a lot of interest in rebuilding these motors. love all the content on YouTube and the fact that people share their knowledge. It's way more interesting than the silly stuff that's on most television these days. My editorial opinion. So there's nuts and some little lock washers. And here, there we go. Keep those together. Bolts out. Come on. Let's see. Maybe I can just separate the halves. You can't see what I'm pulling the grommet out. I'll probably replace this wire. And oh yeah, you can see that. The wire definitely needs to be replaced, so regardless, this is not a wasted effort here. Certainly not. There we go. Certainly is a neat little motor. Oh yeah, excellent. So that is, this is, these are the brushes. And this is exactly the, I looked at a video on YouTube today about this. This is exactly the same. A lady was rebuilding a Singer sewing machine thing. The brushes, there's the, the I do know a little bit about electric motors. I'm certainly not my specialty, but just from general knowledge, I guess. Um, there's some spacers on the end here. And... There's a bearing in the back there that needs to get oiled. Apparently there's some felt and stuff, so you put your machine oil in there. And I'll certainly do that before I reassemble it. I'll take these spacers and washers off. Okay. These are, like I so said, these are the brushes. And this is the, the commutator so that the brushes make contact with. You can see it's a little dirty, it could use a good cleaning, so that's not a waste of time to take it apart. And the, the brushes ride on this little board here, and 
there's nuts that hold the board in place and spacers underneath here. So I'm definitely going to keep all this hardware handy. Pretty simple design. I think this is a quite common design, which is a good thing for my purposes. My plan here, haven't developed it yet, but I need these spacers so I don't lose them. Probably, I may not take even the whole thing out, but yeah, I guess I will. That way I can oil the bearings in the front and clean anything else that needs to get cleaned. But I'm going to be careful with this board because it's a little delicate. But if I just switch the leads around who knows if that would reverse it that would be awesome and let's see can't tell if the leads are even soldered in there they might just be crimped in place man that would be certainly something boy oh boy that would be something else if that's all it took to reverse it all right let's continue with the rest of the disassembly These bolts out. Okay. Alright, what am I doing here? Yeah, the commutator definitely needs to be cleaned. I can see that. Def. All right. There we go. Now you can see the rest of the assembly there. Pretty much stays as is. I definitely can. This is the commutator I was talking about. I'll definitely clean that off. Probably use some 400 grit sandpaper. And then this just pulls out. The armature itself will just pull out. There we go. And there's another bearing at the at the end there and a spacer. Oh crap. I didn't drop one. I'm gonna slip that back together for now. Just leave that together. Alright. Cool. And you can see the brushes with the commutator out of them. <laughs> There they go. Alright, let me I'm gonna quit recording now so I can take the rest of this apart and see what it looks like. Okay, I got the whole thing apart now and what I did just to mark things, I put a piece of yellow electrical tape on the lead that went to this graphite brush and at least that if I ever have if I have to put it back the way I took it apart that that will help me but they were easy to take out they were just stuck through the end matter of fact I think they hold the the brushes and springs in place that way so easy design clever and helpful for me and one thing and it's gonna take me a little longer but I don't know tonight or tomorrow I should be able to wrap this up the this this wire is way worse than I thought initially and um, it's got one of those underwriter knots here that keep it from getting yanked out which so it's a good safety thing and there is bare wire though bare aluminum wire inside happily I have a huge stockpile of I save all kinds of electrical cords and I have a nice this will hold this will do 10 amps, 125 volts, so more than enough capacity. I don't know what I cut this off of, but I was throwing some appliance away or taking it to recycling, and I cut this cord off, and it's a huge long cord, too. It must be about four feet long, so all i got to do is prepare this 
for joining. I'll, I'll cut this off. I'm not sure if I'm going to use crimping or soldering to... Um, soldering would be neater, but I'm not the greatest electrical solderer, to tell you the truth. So we'll see, <laughs> see, we'll see what I end up with. But I'm going to cut this off, prepare the bare the ends, and then do the same thing for this, and splice in this new power cord. Well, I'm not very good at electrical soldering, as you can see here, if you can see the two pieces. But what I've done, let me cut the soldering iron off. I've prepared it by stripping wire away. I did it a length of wire to get away from the underwriter's knot. I left that in there because it was intact below there. And I've got this shrink wrap tube stuff that I can slide over to insulate the wires now that the soldering is done. I'm going to let them cool off a little bit more, but I just wrapped, twisted the wires together. I used a little bit of flux, paste flux that apparently is for electrical soldering. And then I used some very thin soldering wire and soldered the leads together. I have gave them the tug test and they seem to have held, so Although not pretty, I think it's an adequate job. <laughs> I'll show, I'll bring you back after I slide the, th this um, shrink wrap stuff is left over from my old pickup truck that I rewired. I bought a whole bag of this stuff. It's got all these different special lines on there that, they, you know, cruise control, license lights, has a little CB radio. Got little stuff stamped on it, so I just picked the colors that a blue one and a red one, and that that's all there is to it there. But it, they'll be able to, I'll be able to melt them, you know, shrink wrap it down, and um, insulate, re insulate those wires. That's the idea there. Just finished shrink wrapping the little insulation around those wires that I soldered together. It's not perfect, but it'll provide, <coughs> excuse me, a nice little cover for them. So, I'm used to using a heat gun set on low. This thing works great. This is my father-in-law's. It's a Milwaukee heat gun. And uh, beats using cigarette lighters and stuff like that. So, actually, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to get these ones a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is wrap electrical tape around this as well just to give it an extra layer of insulation. Here I've used some 220 grit first and then 400 grit to clean up the commutator. It's looking good now. So I applied some oil to the inside bearing and also to the little hole. There's a, a an oiling hole that's where to go. visible in the bright light, but I oiled it as well. So put that back together. Let's try putting it back together and switching the brushes around, see what happens. Exciting news here, folks. The idea of the, the switching the brushes around actually did reverse the rotation. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up, but you know, I had put a, a mark for the counterclockwise rotation there on the pulley got it all put back together now. I've got it plugged in and if you can see that it's rotating clockwise now. So yay. <laughs> very, very happy about that. Alright now we've got the motor to run the proper direction. The next thing to do is to cut the little piece of aluminum angle and I drilled some holes slightly oversize of the 3 16 inch that is needed and matches up so I can screw it into the bottom of the motor and also let me show you this I had to elongate these holes a little bit but they fit here if you can see that so I can put some 1032 socket head screws in that's remember we tapped the 1032 so that will hold it securely there I got to put the motor on first and these are the little uh, little screws that the motor uses they, that's what mounted the stock bracket and as you can see this is the reason I 
milled that little trough in there. It's the perfect size to allow for the heads so I can slide that bracket on and off. So we'll fasten the motor on first and then fasten the bracket onto the spindle. I'll come back when I got that done. So there are little round head screws attaching the bracket onto the motor. And now I'm fastening the bracket to the grinding spindle with some socket head cap screws. 1032. There we go. Alright, I'll put a little um, a nut on the other side there just to give it complete clamping, but don't need to do that right this second. Important consideration when lining this up was to make sure that the pulley, the belts would line up. So I got that, and if I needed to move it out a little bit, I could, but I think I've got pretty decent alignment there, certainly within the realm of reality. Yes, the next thing to do is to put the nuts on and make a little o-ring belt and check it out. Here I've got the motor mounted to the grinding spindle and I wanted to demonstrate how simple it is to measure off the distance for making your little round drive belt. So the only one of the key factors is to make sure the ends are cut pretty square. So I'm going to trim this one square. Just a little bit of an angle there. All right. Then what I do, I just simply loop it around and you don't pull it super tight, but I, I imagine like it's going to be in the final position. And then I just mark that spot with my fingernail. And then you can either cut it with scissors or what's a little bit better is to use an X-Acto knife or a single edge razor blade so you can get that square cut. Right, I've shown this before one time with the pillar tool project, but the idea, if you can see, this is a vice grip, and I'm holding a safety razor blade, a single edge razor blade, and it's a little easier with larger belts that you're making, but the idea is you heat the blade up red hot, and once it's hot, then you, you hold the rubber pieces on, the pot, you know, the, the urethane belting on, just long enough to melt it. It takes about 15 or 20 seconds, something like that. And then you pull it off and ma carefully mash them together. So I've got a light on, got my magnifying safety glasses on here. Hopefully I'll be able to do that. And let's see. Let's try it. There we go. Just the heat. Baby, nice and hot. Last one I made, I guess I made one of these for the corn, and I actually had to uh, do it twice. And that's the only nice thing about this if you goof up, you can redo it. So I got the blade. These thin blades, razor blades, are easy to get red hot. The hotter it is, then the the shorter period of time time you have to hold it. Set the torch aside. There we go. Mash it on there and mash them together. You just key is to line them up as good as you can and just hold it steady. Once you got them lined up, hold it steady for like a minute or so solid till the plastic gets all cooled together. And then you can use diagonal cutters or scissors or what, what have you, or a razor blade to trim the excess off. So you can see it shortens it a little bit when you do this. All right, well, I still have the fire on and the blade handy. Let's see, is that cooled down? Yeah, it's cooled down. I'm gonna give it a pull test. If it passes the pull test, then you can cut your torch off and um, trim your blade. I'll show you that in a second. Let me show you a handy 
thing for trimming these things around. I love Swiss Army knives. My close friends know that about me. And I've got this one that it has a, a plier, small set of pliers on it, and a small set of scissors. And I absolutely love it. I think it's called the Tinker. Then it has all the other Swiss Army typical functions too. But the one with the pliers and the scissors is fantastic. And these these are stainless steel scissors. And they make great for trimming small things. They're just perfect. So I don't know if you can see this or not. But I like to use them for th projects like this. And uh, I used it last night for putting some holes strategically in a piece of industrial Velcro that I made a... Uh, cord keeper out of so I'm going to trim this I won't bore you by making you watch the whole process but I'm going to spend a little time carefully trimming this thing as smooth as I can get it and then we'll try it out try running it okay I got the um, my little drive belt trimmed down pretty good let's try it try putting it on the easiest way I think well let's put it around the whole thing here <clears throat> and we'll go around the small end and then around the large. There we go. Excellent. So it looks like it fits pretty good. It's not super tight. You don't. They don't have to be tight. These urethane ones get a, a good grip even if it's not super snug tight. All right. And I did oil, after I was running this a little bit last night, I did um, oil it again with this sewing machine oil. And I think it's important, especially with, uh, you saw how dirty the, the commutator was when I rebuilt the motor or switched the the brushes around the the commutator you could feel little ridges in the in the ends of the commutator and it, it, so it's been heavily used in a counterclockwise direction and it it did run a little bit erratic at times I think it was kind of running in the brushes when I um, ran it uh, clockwise so let's plug it in and, and give it a whirl all right let's give it a little test run I've got it plugged into the router speed control I've got it on the variable setting and let me check that out nice very very happy about that I want to let it run a little longer just to kind of run in the commutator like I was saying running the new brush and the brushes in their new orientation we'll get this thing set up on the lathe and get the height set up in the uh, tool holder and give it an actual workout it's still running at full bore you can see a little bit of sparking inside the motor there that's where the uh, brushes are I'm making contact with the commutator Got the little Sherline pallet inside it. That's what I was talking about. I made this little strain relief for the, the new wire coming out. Put a little industrial velcro and I poked a couple holes in it. I put a little fist tie in there just to, uh, to hold the cable steady because that's going to be mounted on the lathe on that side. I'm going to let it run for a little while. Yeah, I did make one mistake that I'm, I just fixed. As you can see, the mounting bar on the grinding and drilling spindle is now it's larger. Luckily, I had a piece of half inch by inch and a quarter steel that I was able to cut off and just drilled and deeply countersunk so that I could screw it onto the spindle. So this will give me the required amount of offset, I believe. I'll test it tomorrow. The other one, the small one here, the half inch, did not. The offset from the quick change tool holder. Okay folks, here we go. This is the basically completed multi-purpose grinding, milling, and drilling spindle with the, sh the um, sewing machine motor. And it uses these Sherline WW collets, which is it's the same design, watchmaker call it's the same design as I used for the tool holders for the arbors for my grinding spindle on my corn. So I should be able to use the corn grinding stones in this as well. Just a couple quick notes. If I'd have done this over again I probably would have put some made some flats on the outside here 
so I could put a wrench on it just for ease of adjustment. Hopefully I won't need to use that very often, um, but that would have been a good idea. Everything else is pretty, pretty good. I, I did have to, I just finished replacing the original quarter inch mounting block with this inch and a quarter mounting block, which as you can see, I needed that extra space to clear the motor. The motor fits so compactly to the spindle, which is what I wanted but I had to <clears throat> use a bar to stand off here. So I just um, put some blue Loctite on the 1032 socket head cap screws that hold the mounting bar into the spindle body. So that's done now. So tonight I'm gonna adjust the height and maybe we'll mount up a little tool and try doing some, some light milling and see how it works in real life couldn't resist a little experiment and I just took a 20 thou deep cut with the eighth inch diameter end mill in the little spindle milling lathe spindle mill whatever you want to call it so let's let's take another one here we go I've got it cranked out full rpm it should be 3000 going to go 40 thou deep on my DRO and then just cranking in by hand. Can hear it bogging down a little bit. Okay. Now we got to the center. Come back out. Hard to get a good angle here. Make some space on the back of the lathe. Maybe if I zoom out to get a little bit better representation. So the unit is compact. I do have it plugged into my router speed control thing here. I do need to be careful not to jam it into anything else, but there's the mill. Nice little milling cut. I am pleased. I think that's gonna, it'll be a, I mean, obviously it's a light duty thing, but for slotting screw heads and making other little, maybe ornamental work, that's gonna be fine. That's gonna be good.